this is my 2017 Volvo S90 T6 inscription. Uh, I bought it July 11th of this year. And I guess you can say this is my review. Uh, I, I always watch them. I'm a car guy. I'm a tech guy. Put both of those things together. I'm kind of like in heaven. But, um, it's like early as shit. All I do is read court cases. Uh, so I just finished reading one. I was quite intrigued by it, actually. Um, basically, the defendant was arguing the value of the commodity and with the value of the commodity how that has a direct reflection on it's you know it's value right and like how much it can be sold for if you trade it in how much are they going to give you for it when you go to buy one you know what kind of condition it's in the condition determines how much one can ask from the consumer or the person interested in buying it. My car has two different color paint. The RPO code for the paint is 019, which is black stone. The front part of my bumper has a metallic, It's, I think it's the metallic paint that Volvo offers, but I, I really can't tell at the moment as I was reading this case it like my mind just won't let, let me rest that I am supposed to pay thirty thousand dollars for a car that has mitch, mismatched paint that that was sold as a CPO certified car and after reading that court case it they made it just made me ask questions like while the car is in the dealer's inventory is it not the dealer's responsibility to take care of the maintenance while they have it see this car had like I don't want to misrepresent but from memory what I can recall at the present this car had like 18 maybe I think it was 18 I'm gonna stop there uh, sales records or uh, ads for the car I don't, I'm not for sure exactly when the dealership acquired the car, like on what date they pulled it in, into inventory. But it was for some time. Like when I when I purchased the car, it had, you know, I think 40, 44, 44, 6 on it. And, um... When they pulled it into the inventory, when they got the car, it had like 30-something, I believe. The car was in their inventory, from what I can tell, around January of 2020. And up until then, from the time that I bought it, the car was in inventory, being driven by customers who was test driving the car. Um, are, are they not responsible for the maintenance while while in the dealer's inventory I mean if you mandate that customers have to make sure they keep the keep their maintenance up on their cars before or, or you know the, the 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 warranty would be void right I mean we, we're not allowed to just do anything to the car while it's under warranty in some cases you're not even allowed to make any type of modifications to the car because it's still under warranty at least that's what the uh, industry used to argue uh, to save themselves revenue um, on claims they would find any small little thing to deny it and if you made a modification to your car they would deny your claim so one would think it's fair to say that the dealership knows the importance of the value of maintenance right and that since they acknowledge that maintenance is a
ties directly into the value and how much you can ask for something or how much you would buy something for. The Just that alone, the period, the, the importance of that, of the value of that. I have been going back and forth with Kuhn, Volvo, and uh, the manufacturer about why my car has two, two different paint like did someone just completely overlook it on the CPO checklist and why why now after the sale is now the value of the CPO checklist not important it's important enough for you to increase the value of the car when you sell it to the consumer and you, you, it has a million dollar marketing campaign behind it that says this car is top of the line. This is why you should buy it versus the standard used car, right? So why is it not important now? Why, why, is it, why is it acceptable that my car has a metallic paint and a 019 black stone paint? I'm just really baffled at the lack of attention to the the lack of follow up. My brakes are warped, <laughs> right? How do you buy a CPO car with mismatched paint and my brakes are warped? My dashboard was bubbling in direct sunlight it has a slit on the side where you can tell someone tried to repair it because there's like in the heat it oozes like this brownish oranges orange sorry um adhesive how do you how do you not see that in the, in the cpl checklist how how were those things overlooked I mean, if Volvo is, is, is touting safety here, then how do you allow one of your dealerships to, that sells your cars to sell a customer a car that has warped brakes? My tires on my car gave out on me like the fourth day I had the car. I paid $1,500 for an all new set of tires. Was was that missed on the CPO checklist as well? I have an IOU from the, the dealership that is uh, supposed to resolve some <laughs> some paint issues with overspray on the very back of the uh, bumper. I was told that the uh, their paint guy who repairs cars that have paint issues only comes to the dealership on certain days. And that someone would follow up to provide a date and time for me to bring the car in to have that issue fixed. No one followed up. I um, opened the complaints directly with Volvo. Um, spoke with a really nice young lady. I think her Alexis. I got a case number. And at first, you know, Volvo followed up with um, calls, and she 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 genuinely seemed like she hated that I was going through through the matter, and you know, she would do her best. And we went back and forth of speaking with each other. Me uh, and the dealer got in contact with each other. We started chatting back and forth with each other. The dealership, Coons Volvo, tells the manufacturer, I guess, it's planned to offer um, a couple of things. Um, to rescind the offer or to or to um, I'm sorry, I just had a thought um, to rescind the offer or to a uh, replacement. My um, choice, uh, because I think that's my right to make this choice, is to to ask for a replacement. 
I didn't want to take my old car. But I, I didn't. I didn't feel comfortable because I've had an experience too, actually, where mechanics get in car and joyride it. You know, just do anything. It's the same thing as um, the dealership allowing customers to test drive cars. I've I've test driven the Volvo by myself before I bought this one. So who knows what customers are are doing or how hard they're driving that car or my car. So I didn't didn't want to go through the route of not having any type of protection of taking the car back by rescinding the offer. So I chose for another one. That was my choice. And the representative from the Volvo dealership, <laughs> he sends over a few cars. He takes the action to actually send over cars for sale that I could look at. Their reply was, you can go to the website and to look at the cars and see which cars I liked. No further direction. No, it has to be between this year and this year or this model and this model or this applies and that applies. No restrictions at all. Just go to the website and let me know um, your choice. I do it four times. I reply with cars. At this time, there are only so many CPO cars on their website that even fits into the price point where I purchased this car. I bought this car at, at 26K. It was listed for 26.5. It had a whole bunch of listings actually because again they had the car for since the beginning of the year from what I can tell. So the the price that they were asking for this car went as low as twenty five thousand dollars. I I purchased at twenty six five. What makes me mad about the matter is when Volvo calls and tells me that they have nothing to do with the matter. You know, it's it's a situation between me and the dealers. It's a sale issue, I end quote, uh, with that statement. It, it's, it's maddening because you think I'm supposed to pay $30,000 for a car that has mis mismatched paint? Warped? Rotors? And how is it not your responsibility when it's you who cr you created the program? You set the terms and conditions that the dealer must follow. <laughs> you make a profit from your million dollar marketing campaign that tells customers that, the, that these cars go through a rigorous inspection. Then how did I get a car with... with <laughs> with warped brakes, mismatched paint, right? A, a dashboard that's bubbling, an infotainment center that will not respond. H how do I end up with that? How are you not responsible for what the organization you allow into the network and what they sell to your customer, it's your car. Your name is on the side of the, your name is on the building, all right? But you tell me that you don't have a dog in this fight. Like you don't have no responsibility to what someone sold on your behalf. I mean, you, you allow your buddies, because clearly you agree with this, right? You haven't spoken up and you keep telling me it's not your fight. How's, I, I'm just, I, I don't understand how it's not. How is, it, how is this acceptable? <laughs> then you, you have your buddies hide behind arbitration agreements. You, you, you take our rights to where if we find something that you have done that's illegal because that's what this is you're representing a car that have has done you know met all the the the, re the requirements set forth by the same company that feels they don't have a reason to address it but they will allow you to continue to sell their cars 
and customers are supposed to just be okay with this? We're not supposed to, we can't fight back because you strip us of our rights to, to only arbitrate? How do I know that the arbitration company is not, you're not in their back pocket? How do I know that? You take my rights away from asking questions about what you sold? Why does my, my, my side view mirrors? Why do I only have one camera? From what I, from my research, I, I don't even see any software installed in the car that will allow me to use three cameras. I think you need a fourth camera in order to get the 360 birds, the bird's eye view thing that the car offers. I don't have that option. So here lies a problem of why is there a camera? And if the car does have this option, why doesn't mine work? And where's my other camera? I was told that they would get back to me on that. I still don't know all the maintenance to the car. I checked the car's brain, the, the ECU, or whatever Volvo name, whatever name Volvo gave it. And uh, I had like 30 something uh, trouble codes. Am I stored in the ECU and the, all the other components that, the, um, that it monitors? 36 codes. One was a leak. One was a, an exhaust leak. Thirty-six codes on a CPO car, and then now I'm I'm asking questions like, okay, what's up with this car? Why is it if the car was only per the uh, Carfax, if the car only has damage to the back where the two overspray uh, spots are? And I understand that it's acceptable for them to make light repairs. Key word is light, slightly, barely, can't go overboard. Then why does my paint look like this? Why does my bumper have a different have have metallic crystals in it, but the rest of the car don't? I had to. I've paid almost. I'm, I'm like $3,100 $3, in paying for stuff on this car. Even before th I've had the car for three weeks, I was already $3,100 in the hole on a certified car. I had to buy tires and a windshield. And to add injury to insult, the windshield that I just spent $1,200 for now has the metallic sprinkles left on it by from the, um, the windshield wipers. This metallic paint on my um my side mirrors I mean my side windows this metallic paint internally it's in the fiber of the of, of the carpet and in, in the on the the C pillars I think those things are called in the fabric there's metallic sparkles <laughs> in the fabric on the inside of the car So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to conclude with uh, my my review of the car itself. I I don't know, man. It's I don't really get to to drive the car. I'm dealing with a uh, vibrations. I found this car the sexiest thing that's that is on the road, and it's three years old. I loved this car when it went to the Geneva Auto Show and when they revealed it, I think in 2015 or 16, I think it was 16. I used to watch, I love Motor Week. So I, I always used to watch the, um, the Motor Week Volvo episode because I wanted this car. I was going to wait for three years for depreciation, made sure my credit was spotless, which it was because I got the, with certified cars, they offer you special financing, and I got the 1.99%. And yes, I'm proud of that because as a black man, it takes a lot of work to get to 800. No shade. And I keep thinking, well, maybe that's the reason why they are acting like they have nothing to do with this, with this matter. I mean, if dealerships have uh, and, and lenders have the right to charge black and brown people extra interest rates just because we're black. 
No wonder I'm getting this type of treatment. And if you don't believe me, you can look it up. There was a law passed in 2016 that says that lenders and dealerships, because basically they are partners, get to charge, um, you know, black people, brown people, you know, minorities, extra interest. I lied to you not. Please go look it up. I don't say I don't bring knives to gunfights. I don't like egg on my face. I don't like spitting facts that, that I haven't verified. So it's like, I'm not going to pay $30,000 for this car. Three of my speakers are, are out. Just the only thing I can do at this point was to just validate, make my recordings. I understand how in these type of cases, how important writings are, who you spoke with, what you said. What time of the day it was? What was the weather outside? Yes, I'm serious. All that's important when you're documenting for your, your CYA file. And if memory serves me correct, I also believe that one, one consent recordings is legal in Virginia. I haven't went that far. It, I mean, it's it's maddening. I can't sleep because all I think about is the situation and how unjust it is, how unfair it is, what, what the laws say versus actually what is actually being done and why it's not being done and the reasons behind why it's not being done. It pisses me off of how we're just supposed to just sit back and just allow this shit. And no matter how many government agencies there are, or attorney generals, how it doesn't apply to the very people it was designed for. If you go get a lawyer, then it depends on how he or she feels, how valuable she feels or he feels to the case, right? How much money can I make from it? The websites that I have visited, they're supposed to give you like, well, not supposed to, but gives you, you know, what the law is, tells you at the very bottom, you know, we don't give advice. We don't give, you know, this <laughs> law advice, I guess. I'm just maddening. But, um, I, I, I can't accept this. I won't accept this. You're not going to sell me a car that you, A, didn't keep the maintenance up on, has two different paint colors, has one camera, but no software. Paint, I mean, just swirl marks everywhere. Orange peels everywhere. In between Volvo Financing Company, the dealership, that's inside the Volvo network and Volvo themselves, nobody, nobody knows what I'm talking about. No one cares to know what I'm talking about because the deal is done. I got your money, right? What do I need to come back and help resolve things for? What's a warranty of fitness? What's implied? What's, in, what's, what's express warranty? It don't apply to you, black boy. You have no idea what you're talking about. Nor do we care. So can you stop emailing us and calling us? Because, But no, I won't. Absolutely not. I won't. You're not going to strip my rights and sell me anything and tell me I just got to deal with it. No, no, you won't. If I got to cash out my 401k, all three of them, that's what will happen. But you're not gonna just 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 sell me anything. And I know you just expect for the consumer not to say anything and to just put up with it. Not me. The auto industry is one of the most corrupt industries there are in our country. And they get away with this bullshit because they hide behind, like I said, arbitration clauses. 
So you steal from me to give to an organization that already has. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. I can't accept this. So that's my review on my 2017 Volvo S. Sorry, yeah, it is S S90 T6. She's sexy, but not for the price that I paid for it. Nope. So if acting like that, um, you know, you don't care about the matter, or I, just hoping that I'll get, I'll get tired if you sit back and don't say anything for for a couple of months because it's right now what's going on three. Please think again. Please know that every night I am reading and educating myself better than what I was because I won't accept this. Be careful. Document everything when you buy a car. There's some thieves out there at Coons Volvo. Trust and verify, but this fight's not over.